there, I'm Matt Holland and you're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello, welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV, another episode of our World Cup show. Uh, we've got Will joining me in the studio once again, thank you very much Will. No worries, anytime. Um, so we talked about the games from last night, uh, Argentina uh, victorious over Nigeria. A uh, bit of a mad game, a lot of controversy. Uh, VAR seems to be the really hot talking point at the moment and we went over this, uh, I think it was in our first episode yeah. when you joined us um, and we were kind of happy with how VAR was going but since then there's been a lot, uh, like a lot of decisions and, yeah, uh, and yeah. a lot of players calling for VAR or almost every... Well it seems season. like a any time there's some sort of controversial moment the, the players go straight to the referee and it's all about this and it's happening almost every two or three minutes now at this stage. And I think that's one of the biggest problems with it. But like I th think we said in, in the first video too, is it's a system that's going to evolve. It's not going to stay the same. There's going to be changes made to, to, to perfect it. And that's pretty much, I suppose, all they could do. It's a bit of trial by error. Um, but we've seen the results of it in lots of games where I think it's been the most penalties in the World Cup ever. And we're only still in the group stages. Yeah. So that shows that more decisions are being getting right. We saw that obviously in the game last night with a penalty um, so yeah look it's just something that is going to change evolve and will get better it's not perfect yet I think the thing with the players is getting actually quite annoying the it's, fact all, that it's almost like when players are going trying to exactly to exactly bad, exactly similar. and you have to feel the referees in a way as well because it's what do they do they're caught in the middle because it's well at the back of their mind it must be well if the decision I've got is incorrect and I don't go to VAR I'll get slammed after the game but if I do go to VAR again and again and again and again then it's just going to slow down the game and people and fans are going to get a bit frustrated with it but as I said that's what you know FIFA UEFA and all these organizations will have to look at and uh, make changes to perfect the system yeah but the thing is it's so stupid for players like Mash Brown to be doing stuff like that and it is needless to be pulling people in and around out, out, like, to the well, ground. Well we've seen it, we've seen a lot of it in this World Cup of you know we saw it with Harry Kane how he was wrestled to the ground. Yeah, uh, I think know, Titi as well for France I think it was against someone. Yeah. I think he got um, pulled up on it as well. Exactly so you know almost brings back memories of 2002 when I think yeah, in South Korea and Japan, yeah. yeah. But the referees, I remember back then, were, were, were given uh, notice to make sure to kind of clamp down on that sort of thing. And we saw that against Spain. It was twice, wasn't it, the penalties? Yeah. Um, so it seems to be something that the referees have been told to clamp down on again, which I think is a really good thing. It's one of the most frustrating things to see in the box. Well, it's blatant, and you would think it's one of the easiest things to spot as well, because it, it's quite black and white. We saw Mascherano, definite penalty. What yeah. is he doing? He almost cost his country, you know, a place in the next round. Yeah, he was, for me, he was just really annoying me watching the game. I remember at one point he was actually following the ref. I just bickering with him the whole way up the base. I suppose he, and he looked like he was just cursing, saying everything to the ref. And he, I, I, well, I don't know if he got a yellow for that uh, fell in the end. Yeah. Uh, but for me, it looked like he should have been sent off with the way he was carrying on. Like, this, it, it is, well, this maybe you might have a bit of loss in translation there, maybe. Well, no, because I, 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 I can live with him at one point, and he was, he was in, um Curse words in English, so yeah, yeah. Um, but on a kind of brighter note, uh, Messi's goal. It's great to see Messi score, but what a way for Argentina to basically get into the next round. Couldn't have left it any later, and you know, it was a superb finish by Marcus Rojo. Uh, that was a bad foot, I think. Uh, yeah, which you have to say, I'm not saying did he mean it, but I think it's one of those stuck the foot out there, it came off from great finish. Anywhere else, goalkeeper probably gets it, but. Superb finish into the corner. I think it was 89 minutes. Right, Couldn't have, right, yeah, right. something like that. Couldn't have left it any later. And Argentina sneak into the next stage for a great game. To set up a great game, which is going to be against France. And that's going to be uh, very interesting. I don't think they'll have a hope against France, but we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, but it's one of those things that we to look forward to. So that's, the, that's the beauty yeah. of it, I suppose. It's always good to have them in that stage as well. Because Argentina always bring a bit of flair, a bit of pizzazz. So, yeah, yeah. I'm glad they did get through. Yeah, and uh, on the other guy game then there was uh, Croatia against Iceland. Poor old Iceland. Poor old Iceland. <laughs> Listen, it was you know there was inevitable. Yeah, it was. They're one of the sides to bring uh, you know something different to the World Cup. It's great to have them. Their fans are. I was at the Euros uh, in Paris and saw them play France, and spent all night with their fans. Absolutely incredible bunch of people. Um, and if any of them are watching, hello to them there. Um, but uh, yeah, no, they were, they were great. and they, It's great to have those sides at the tournament. It'll be great for Icelandic football. 
Um, I think I showed you maybe the ad that the goalkeeper, who's a, yeah. a TV producer, produced for Coca-Cola. If you get a chance to watch it, absolutely incredible. Um, and it's, yeah, as I said, it's great to have a side like that. They were found out, I think, a bit at the end, just lacking some sort of quality uh, in certain areas of the park. Um, but you know they can hold their heads high and go home. And, you know they represent the country very well. Yeah, and on the other note, uh, Croatia have been fantastic. That's yeah, it's nine points out of nine now. Exactly, haven't put a foot wrong, and into the next stage. And as well, if you look at who they play uh, in the next stage, Denmark. Uh, exactly, it's to me that they've almost one foot now in the quarterfinals. It, once, once they get get their head screwed on and don't kind of take the foot off the gas, they've been really impressive and. We hate to say the term dark horses for the tournament, but um, certainly you could see them going going further. Yeah, I'd say semi-finals at least for them. You would, yeah, as a Croatia fan, you, you'd be hoping. But uh, in terms of like themselves, uh, they, they're very clinical. Yeah, yeah, look, they've done their job. Nine points from nine, you can't complain with that. The manager will be very happy, the fans will be very happy, and the players will be going into the next round full of confidence. Denmark won't be wanting to play against Croatia. Uh, but they've been fairly solid themselves, so it'll be interesting to see how Croatia deal with the very kind of different side. We know Denmark don't have a huge amount going forward, but they are quite a solid team. And I think they'll look to play on that strength in that game. Uh, keep it compact, keep it tight, and you know try and get Eriksen to, to work a little bit of magic up front, possibly play on the counter-attack against them, frustrate Croatia. I think you know if they're able to hold Croatia to to nil nil 45 minutes even 60 minutes then Croatia will get a little bit ooh, you know edgy edgy and kind of a bit nervous and that's that would I think be my game plan if, if I'm Denmark to to try and attack with Croatia because they are in really good form at the minute yeah Denmark look uh, decent enough I don't know it's a uh, Christian Eriksen show if they can keep him quiet but there is players like Sisto there who has been doing well and um, at, he went off yesterday I don't know whether that was true injury or whether they were, they were mm. wrestling him but he looked very good and they were playing France as well, so um, I think it was nil. Was it nil nil? Uh, yes, it was nil nil. Yeah. yeah, so I think that's a good result. It was, but I think it was also one of those games where they were really on. For Fran France get a point. They qualify. On, was it Denmark got a point as well, and yeah. or whoever didn't lose or something like that. So it kind of suited both of them as well. Um, so we talked about Sisto. Yeah, we've we've mentioned him before. Uh, one of probably the only other flair players in the the Denmark side who has a bit of a, a bit of a trick, a bit of something about him. But he's young, he, he's immature, yeah. and you know can make maybe mistakes in other area of the areas of his game. But um, yeah, an interesting player to see. Uh, and yeah, it'll be it'll be a good good interesting tie. Looking forward to that one. Yeah, and I'm I'm looking forward to seeing now the, the the rest of the the group games and then kind of who goes into the um the last sixteen. Um, I'm, I'm, Brazil should be there thereabouts now. Yeah, I think so. Still haven't been overly impressed by them. I um, was in the second game. I just think maybe you just hark back to the older Brazil sides. Just sometimes they're a little bit, a bit too. I don't know. They've lost. Walk it in. No, but sometimes you kind of. I I don't know. They they may have lost a little bit of that Brazilian soul. I think in recent years, uh, Neymar has been you know pulling out some of the tricks as which you want to see. You want to see a Brazilian side entertain. Um, and they were, you know, they, they left it late in the last game. Didn't yeah, they? but so. the Jesus has hit the bar and they had a couple of chances where they came close. So if they mm -hmm. go in, people are like, oh, Brazil are amazing. I think it's just one of those teams. I think gradually as games keep on coming, I think they will get better. Uh, as I think probably Germany will as well. Yeah, well, the next game for Germany have to, is yeah. good. Well, yeah, they can't play any worse than they have been in this tournament so far. They won't get away with it. And Brazil, I think, you know, I'm just looking forward to seeing them play a big side. And see how they get on because obviously you know they'll still have that haunting memory of of, of uh, back in the last World Cup against Germany, so it'll be a real test for them to come up against a you know a Belgium or an England or a, a Germany somebody like that and see how they get on um, and see how these players perform and see if they're up to the mark. We know individually they are as a team. What sort of uh, mentality has the manager got uh, installed into this side? Yeah, I think Coutinho has been brilliant. Yeah, yeah, he's really come on a bit because I don't think he's done yeah, too, well bar, it? too much maybe since his, his move to Barcelona. But um, yeah, no, he, he has been he's been really interesting. A bit a little bit disappointed. William uh, hasn't maybe hit the height he has with, with Chelsea this season. He's been really. Do you really think he has born as long as we? Oh you, God, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. Yeah, William, you know, I think is one of the most underrated players um, at Chelsea. He doesn't get an awful lot of credit at times, and for the past few years, he's been one of the most 
um, consistent players who really, I always think, puts in a, a really good shift and he has a, a trick and a shot and a free kick about him that you know, most teams would love, including Manchester United, if rumours are to be believed. Um, so yeah, but again, I suppose they've, they've got options there then as well. You know, if something isn't working, they've got players off the bench they can bring in. Yeah, Douglas Costa. Uh, he's another one, yeah. He's very good. He set up the golf for Neymar. I think he came off the bench and set up the golf for Neymar. So they can go up levels and they can bring on players of a higher I think they'll quality. have to. I think if they do, if they have real ambitions of trying to win this tournament, I think they are going to have to go up another level because what I've seen from them so far has been good, but not work up winning good. Yeah, totally. I couldn't agree with you more on that. Another game I'm actually really, really excited about now is Belgium and England. I just think because there's the whole a lot of the players play in England and they all know each other and play, either playing against each other or playing with each other at club football, and I, I just I'm I'm really excited about. It. Oh yeah, it's going to be one of those games like the you know the likes of uh, Vertonghen and Alderweireld, Courtois, Hazard up against Harry Kane, Gary Cahill, Loftus Cheek, Deli Ali. All these players play together, so it's a bit of a weird one for them to have to face each other, but. There can't be any sort of split loyalties or, or friendships on the day. It's going to be a an important one because it decides who tops the group. Um, and obviously they'll be looking at to see who the possibilities of, of who they play in the next round and what team they want. So yeah, it's 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 a really really important game for both. And then as well, you know, if you look at the other side of things too, momentum is such a key thing in football. You don't want to lose that momentum. You know, England want to bounce off that six one against Panama. A win against Belgium, they'll be going into the next round sky high, um, three wins out of three. Uh, a draw for both sides would keep it fairly consistent, and then it would be interesting to see who would top the group. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that one. But for me, I, I just think that it's going to be key because um, Harry Kane and Lukaku will be wanting to to go for that um, golden boot. So I think I don't think they're going to be taking it easy. I think if well, it would depend on if they played them or not because. They may decide to rest and it depend on whether they're going to fancy the chances or not. But if they do both start, they're both going to be, and they're both high on confidence. So they and they both probably class each other as the best strikers yeah. uh, for their countries. Or even I know Lukaku thinks that he's the best striker in in England. Well, I think you know when we talk about you know whether players will play or not. I think. I think the manager will have a look at the players. If there's any sort of slight concerns or if he sees any sort of slight tiredness, then he will probably rest them. But I think only after two games. I don't think there will be. And I'm going to stick my head in the line. I think Gareth Southgate will, will go with near enough the same eleven that started against Panama. You don't really want to change a winning team. You want to reward those players for the work that they did against Panama. As you said, the likes of Harry Kane, I'm sure he'll be like, no, I'm the captain. I want to play. I've already got five goals, is it? let me continue to go more, he'll be just, I want to get another two against Belgium, that puts me on seven after the group stages. Um, and yeah, the striker will, will always have that golden boot, the same with Lukaku in his mind. But I think as well, with Harry Kane, I think he, he'll know being the team captain, it's, he, he won't, I'm not saying he won't care about the goals so much, but he'll want the win more than anything, yeah. even if he doesn't score. Uh, so yeah, I think the teams will be fairly close, because I think at this stage they won't be too tired That'll be what the managers are looking for. There's the day off on Friday. Um, you know, they have a few days rest until the second round then as well. And I think it'll be more of the momentum, keep that good vibe going, that winning vibe, uh, and give the players, that they'll feed off that, especially with another win, the biggest win so far if they can get it over Belgium. Yeah, and then I think there's another game, Uruguay and uh, Russia. Uh, that would be a very interesting toy, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we saw a little bit of a collapse by Russia in their last game, um, but I think Uruguay will go, uh, you know, into the next stage just again full of confidence. Um, three wins from three, is it? And again, we've we've seen Cavani score, we've seen uh, Suarez score. Godin looks in good form at the back, and they've got other players around the pitch that. Are just adding to the to the flavour a bit for for Uruguay. Some say they're a little bit hard to watch for the fans. I quite enjoy watching them, to be honest with they're you. They're effective. They're effective, and yeah, yeah, it's again you can see them. I think going, you know, definitely past the the next stage. You see them kind of similar to Croatia, so. Yeah, yeah. Again, depending on the draw they get, depending on, um, I think if they're able to keep their heads. Uh, especially when they come up against maybe something that doesn't go their way. We saw Cavani not score and being very frustrated, so sometimes you can get that out of 
those South American players, they can be quite fiery. We saw that with Argentina. Um, <laughs> they're always <laughs> losing their discipline, and that's something you have to keep when you get to the, the later stages of, of the World Cup. Um, but yeah, they, they look quite good. But you can't good. really, you can't really, you know, look past them when you've got players like Cavani, Suarez, and and say Godin. They're doing it week in week out at their clubs, and you know, well, maybe not Godin, but he did win the league at Atletico, um, and he was in a couple of Champions League finals as well. So they they do have they experience. Have experience, yeah, and I think as well they they help raise the level of the other players because the other players come in, you know they're the superstars of the team, and then they raise their game to try and, you know. For players, for individual wise as well, it's a huge soft window for them to to get a big move somewhere else, maybe if they're looking for it. But again, playing for the country uh, at a World Cup, that there is no higher honor, really, is there? Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, I think we've chatted about everything we can. on everything we could. Uh, everything we can. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the to the next stages now. Uh, it's a very open World Cup. Um, if there's anything that we have left out, let us know in the comments. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do. We're nearly at two uh, two thousand one hundred. No, sorry, 2,200, so make sure you get us up there now, we're only 8 to go, um, and as well as that, don't forget to like the video, go over to Will's page, give him a follow, and uh, enjoy the rest of the World Cup, thanks for watching.